él va a haber eh, área de preguntas y respuestas hasta el final. Le voy a dejar el radio para que él lo oiga en inglés, ¿sí? Okay. Todas las preguntas. Ya está aprendido. De hecho, él no entiende español. ¿no? Ah, entiende sí, español, entiendo. no necesitarás sí. entonces. No, no, pues mucho, pero entiendo. Te, te lo dejo por si sí, tienes sí, necesidad, ¿sí? Bueno, buenos días chicos, muchísimas gracias por acompañarnos, eh, esta conferencia es, es muy importante, es la, eh, la conferencia de Jochen Cies, es el director general de Sabaraza México, eh, va a platicar sobre su experiencia que tuvo en, en FIFA trabajando en Electronic Arts, eh, su experiencia en el juego de Atrévete a Soñar y en el juego de AAA Lucha Libre Héroes del Ring, entonces les pido un fuerte aplauso por favor y les, les dejo el micrófono. Gracias. Um, I'm sorry that I'm, I'm here for three years now in, in Mexico, but I, I still don't really speak Spanish, so I usually speak in English, and I, I hope that's that's okay. Um, so today I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about me, so not me as a person because that would be pretty boring, but about my personal um, experience working in video games because um, I, I'm here in Mexico now for about three years. And I got to know the industry here pretty well. I'm involved in the industry. I work with, with some of the key players here in the industry. And before I came here, I worked for a big studio in Canada. And um, I think I can, com I can compare the two industries pretty well. So that's what I'm trying to do today. Basically, what you're going to get in the next, I don't know, half hour um, is my personal impression on what the Canadian industry looks like and where we are in Mexico right now. And I hope that all of you are gamers and interested in games, or maybe even interested in making games, and I can give you some input on how it is possible to make games in Mexico right now. All right, so these are the titles that I worked on while I was working for EA. Um, mainly sports titles, so unfortunately I don't have any experience in first-person shooters, in science fiction games, in racing games. It's, it's mainly sports. That's where my experience comes from. And these are some of the things that I'm involved with right now here in Mexico. So I'll get into details more uh, in a little while. It's still sports to a certain degree, but it's a little bit more of a violent sport than football on a football pitch. All right, so I'm going to start by giving you a few impressions from um, the studio in, in Vancouver, um, where I worked at for, for Electronic Arts. And my question is basically, what do you need to make a AAA franchise? So a AAA franchise, what does that mean? A AAA title is one of the big titles. It's like Gears of War. It's FIFA. It's Need for Speed. It's Halo. Those are the AAA titles. Those are the titles that are very expensive to produce. But at the same time, they sell so much that they also generate a lot of revenue for the companies um, that make these titles. A franchise is a title that comes out every year. So FIFA comes out every year. The new football season starts in summer. Two months later, FIFA's, FIFA's in, uh, in the stores. So that's what it's called, a, a franchise. So what do you need to make a AAA franchise? Um, this helps uh, a nice city, um, a nice environment where you live and work in. So you have to work a lot in the video game industry um, because you're surrounded by passionate people and everybody wants to make those games, so you, you're going to spend a lot of time in, in, at work. So a city like Vancouver really, really helps because once you get out of work, you have this amazing city and you can do all kinds of different things. In winter, you can go skiing. In summer, you can lay at the beach. And when I first started to work for EA, it wasn't a hard sell to move to Vancouver because I was like, yeah, I, I'd like to live here. Why not? So same for Mexico by the way like for me Mexico wasn't a hard sell either like I, I think Mexico is a very very interesting country and I really like living and working here actually I like it better than Vancouver that's just but it's just me I always like showing this photo because so you see the little fat building on the left it has like this this patio like right here and that was the EA patio so the top floors of the building were owned by EA. That's where EA did the, the title Need for Speed. So the Need for Speed team was working in this building, the, the skate team was working in this building, and every Friday afternoon on that patio they had free beer for everybody, which was great because she worked hard the whole week and then came around Friday afternoon like, eh, it's 
about four o'clock now time for beer so so we all went to that studio and we rang in the weekend that way so that helps as well so i think that we have to do that more here in mexico like drink more beer at work i think it helps so this is a top shot of the the studio in vancouver um of ea it, it's huge like what you see you see the football pitch it's on top of the parking garage it's a full-size football pitch like a, a real size of a real football pitch and the buildings around there those are the, the the studios so at the time when i was working there which was a bit more than three years ago there were 2500 people uh working there so 2500 people going to work every day doing nothing else but making video games so this was the home to many many different game teams so a game team is basically the, the group of people coming from different backgrounds, the programmers, the artists, the producers. Um, they, make a, they make a game. So there's the FIFA game team, there's the NBA Live game team, there's the NHL game team, and all kinds of other games are made in that studio. So I'd say there's about maybe, I don't know, maybe 40 different game teams uh, spread out through, uh, in, in those buildings. It's an exciting work environment because it, it feels a little bit like a university campus. It doesn't really feel like you're going to work. Like, I've never seen anybody in a suit in there, you know? Like, you go, like, the way you dress normally. Like, in summer, you come with shorts and with flip-flops. And, and nobody cares because it's video games, so you don't have to dress up for your work. And you, you're in this, an amazing, uh, in this amazing building with lots of glass structures, modern building. You, you're overlooking the city. You have the, the mountains in the background. So it's, it motivates you to go to work in the morning. Um, the facilities are excellent. On, on the left side, you see a, a small little building, which is a motion capture studio. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. EA owns, I think, the <laughs> EA, I think, owns the biggest uh, motion capture studio in the world. But there's motion capture studios here in Mexico as well. I, I'll talk a little bit more about that. All right. So at the end of the day, like no matter how great um, your the building is that you're going to work to, this is your work. You sit at a desk and you stare into a computer screen. Like, it doesn't matter that all these fantastic facilities all around you because what you see for 8 to 14 hours every day is the information on your computer screen and you don't see anything around it. You don't see the football pitch, you don't see the gym, you don't see the motion capture studio, you don't see the mountains. You see one or two computer screens. And that's, at the end of the day, all you need. Like, all you need is basically the equipment to, to work, Another goal? <laughs> um, equipment is all you need. So if you have the people, if you have the equipment, if you have the software, and you have, if you have a room that fits all, that, uh, all those people, you can start making a game. So you don't need all the fancy stuff. This is how the Sabarasa studio looks in, in Argentina. So the, the company I, I represent right now is Sabarasa. I'm running the Mexican, uh, Mexican studio here in Mexico City. The headquarters are in, in Buenos Aires, in Argentina. There's about 70 people working there. And this is how it looks there. They don't have a football pitch. They don't have glass structures. But they have computers, they have people, and they have the software required to, to make the games. And this is how it looks in Mexico right now. <laughs> Where's Andro? Andro, show yourself. Who can find Andro on the, on the photo? <laughs> So we're a small team here in Mexico, but we're a good team. I think we, we, we collected a, a group of people which is passionate about making games, which has the skills that you need, um, which knows how, to use, uh, knows how to use the tools, and is motivated to put out a great game. And, uh, and at the end of the day, that's really all you need. It's, it's the people that make it. It's the people that make a game. So I'm going to give you a, a little bit of a breakdown of how a game team looked at EA. Because EA works on FIFA, which is a big, massive title. There's a lot of people working there. So this is just a, an example of the kind of jobs that are available at EA right now. It's not even all of them. I think the, the, the huge FIFA team was about definitely more than 100 people working there. The, and, the, and depending on the time of the project, people coming in, people leaving again. So in total, there's probably two, 300 people involved in making FIFA every, every year. I was lucky enough that I could participate and be part of that team for three years. And you have the, 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 the directing staff in the middle, the producer, the tech director, product manager for marketing, and the art director. Those are the guys who are 
giving direction to the team. And then you have the different game areas around it. So you have the AI team, game design team, audio team, art team, localization team, presentation, front end, online. And all of those offer opportunities for different types of jobs in there, depending on what your passion is. If you're a programmer, you can, uh, you can start working for the AI team. You can start working for the art team as the art programmer. Um, if you're an artist, you can, you, you can start working in the game design team. You can start working in the art team. You can st uh, start working as a modeler, as an animator. So there's, there's a lot of different opportunities in, on there uh, in a company like that. At EA right now, there's more opportunities just because they're a huge company and there's always opportunities at a company like that. But there's also opportunities here in the local uh, industry in Mexico. Local industry in Mexico right now, it's growing, it's starting, there's few companies. But the few companies that are there, they are looking for qualified people. They are looking for people who can do the job. So here's some, some examples that I uh, selected. Let's see if this, the link works. Uh, no? Okay. <laughs> all right. So basically all you need to do is, like, I, I often get asked how, did, how I got my job at EA. Because before I worked for EA, I was living in Germany. I wasn't even living in Canada. So how did, did I get my job at EA? I went to jobsea.com online. And they have a job listing for each one of their studios. They have dozens of studios around the world. And for each one of their studios, they, they regularly need people. And if you go on the job listing you find out what they're looking for. So you find out the type of jobs that they offer, but what is important is you, you take a look at those job listings you, and you go and look into the details. So if you're a programmer and you want to work in a specific area of the game, you need to find out what programming languages they require. If, the, if they require that you have knowledge of a game engine. For an artist, the same thing. Like, What kind of background do you need to have? Do you need to have a graphic design background? Uh, are you going to be an animator? Are you going to be a modeler? What are you going to use? Are you going to use Maya? Are you going to use another tool? All these things you find out from, from the job website, and then you can pick those tools. So if you don't have the knowledge yet, well, and you're an artist or a modeler who wants, who wants to start working for EA, get a copy of Maya, because that is the tool that they're working with at EA. Don't use anything else, because they're not going to hire you, because you don't have the experience that they're specifically looking for. And that information is readily available on their websites. So if you're interested in working for the big guys at some point, start doing your homework now. Start working with the tools that they're using and get good in those and then apply. Don't apply now if you don't know anything because they're not going to even look at your application. But do the research, do the homework, start getting good in the things that they're looking for and then apply. And then you have a really good chance of getting a job there. All right. I'll pick out one area that I just talked about of making games. It's modeling. I wish it would be this kind of modeling that would, be, would make me want to go to work so much more. But <laughs> unfortunately, it's not. It's more like this. <laughs> so I was lucky enough that the kind of character models that we did uh, working for FIFA, uh, <laughs> that we did working for FIFA were not these kind of creepy, whatever it is. Um, it was those guys. So this is what you do when you're a modeler at, at EA. Um, you, you, you create the football players, you create the characters that are in the game. Back then, Ronaldinho was the best player in the world, so he was our cover athlete, and we spent a lot of time on making Ronaldinho look like Ronaldinho, or Lukas Podolski, or Wayne Rooney. So this is what you do as a modeler at EA. You get photo material, and you need to look at the reference material that you get, and you start modeling that person as lifelike as possible because FIFA wants to be as realistic as possible. So all of the players in there, they need to look like in real life. If somebody in FIFA doesn't look like in real life, then the job missed their goal for that, for, for that uh, the, the team missed their goal for that season. So basically, it's modeling and texturing for characters and environments. So in the case of FIFA, let me give you one example. Here's Wayne Rooney. This is how Wayne Rooney looked in, I think, in the game in 2006. He looked like Shrek. That's because he does look like Shrek in real life. <laughs> but our goal was to make him look a little bit less like Shrek and like a, a, a cover athlete. And these are the steps that, that brought the team to make uh, uh, Rain Rooney look like more like in real life. 
So you start with the geometry, you, do, you put on different textures, and then finally, hopefully, he looks like in real life. And this guy can go home. All right, this guy, absolute nightmare. <laughs> like imagine you're a modeler and you, s you spent, I don't know, a few weeks on making the head of David Beckham look like in real life. And you turn on the sports news on your internet browser and you're like, damn it, <laughs> David Beckham got a new haircut, I can start over again. <laughs> and this happened all the time. It really happened all the time. There, there was one year where we had to change his haircut like three or four times just to make him look like he's in real life. Um, so I, he I heard he's retired now. Some people in Canada will be really, really happy about that. <laughs> so the other, the other part of modeling is, is environments. And in, in the case of World of Warcraft, it's, it's like a space in, 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 uh, in, a, in a fantasy land. In Gears of War, it's, 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 it's war territory. FIFA, the environment, is always a football stadium. That's where all the action takes place in, in FIFA. It doesn't take place anywhere else but in a football stadium. So for FIFA, what the team is trying to do every year is to make those stadiums look as realistic as possible. So all the stadiums that are in the game, there's not a single fantasy stadium in there. There's, they're all real stadiums that exist somewhere around the world. So the most important ones are in FIFA. And there's a photographer that travels around the world and takes reference photos like you see right now. The team takes those reference photos and starts rebuilding those stadiums uh, those data in, on their computer. Now, that was FIFA. And basically, the exactly the same thing we're doing right now for AAA. So AAA obviously needs to create the characters. And that, in, this, in the case of AAA, is the luchadores. And the environments, which are... The, the the rings for uh, for uh, where the where where the fights are taking place. And in this case, it's actually a fantasy environment. It doesn't exist like that as well. But there's also authentic ones in the game. But the job of the people who are doing this is exactly the same. So FIFA, yes, they have probably 200 players with authentic heads in their game, and they have I don't know 20, 25 stadia in the game. So the workload there is a little bit bigger. For AAA Lucha Libre, less players. There's only about 24, 25 luchadores in there, and less stadia as well. But the, ex the, the process of getting there is exactly the same. We're using the same tools. We're using the same processes. The, the people who are doing it need to have the same skill than the people in FIFA. These are examples from, from the Wii version, where obviously the, the graphical qu quality is not like PS3 because you don't have the, the power of the hardware. But for a, a Wii version, I think the, the graphics look pretty amazing. Oh, now look at this. This is another game we're doing right now, which is Atrevete a Soñar, which is based on a, a Televisa show. It's for little girls. The little girls love it. Um, I always, like, I have a niece and a nephew at home in, in, in Germany. And whenever I came home, I always brought them free games. I mean, th those are the advantages of your uncle working for a video game company. So, but I always brought home FIFA. So my the, my, my nephew's like, hey, new FIFA. And my niece like, hey. like another football game. So finally, I can come home and and bring my niece something home for a present. Um, so back to what I was saying. So you see on the top left, you see a reference photo. This is how one of the environments in the case of Trevet is a stage. This is how it looks in, on TV. And at the bottom right, this is how we recreated it for uh, the video game. Obviously, it's missing the characters in that shot. But it's pretty authentic. Same goes for Patito's bedroom. <laughs> Top left, uh, the reference. Bottom right, it's how it looks in game. I think it's almost nailed to the T. And here's Patito. This is how she looks in the game. So we went for a little bit for the more comic approach. Um, cartoony approach uh, in recreating the characters, but I think you can see where we got the inspiration from. So basically we took the real person, photos of the real person, and our artists started recreating the person. Same for Antonella. On the right this is how she looks in real life, or in the TV show, and on the left this is how she'll look in the game. And another character from Atrevete. 
So I think the artists really managed to capture the spirit of each one of those personalities. And some more examples from AAA Lucha Libre. Again, where the approach was to get as, realistically, as realistic as possible in depicting the luchadores. All right. So what's this? Anybody has an, has an idea what this is? All right. This is a, it's a motion capture studio. So after you've modeled and created the, the characters in your game, you need to start making them move. So you can do that uh, doing it uh, in, a, in a traditional way and animating it frame by frame, which is good in many cases, but it's also very time consuming in other cases. So this is why there's things like a motion capture studio where you put people in funny looking black suits with like little dots on it, and then uh, an array of cameras captures the movement exactly how the person does it. And this and the data can be transferred onto your computer directly. So you don't have to animate your character bit by bit by bit. You just take the, the data that is captured in the motion capture studio and put the rig of your, of your character on it. And then r right away you have an animation that would take you a long time doing it uh, by hand, um, much, much faster with the motion capture system. So the photo that I have here, it's out of the EA studio, which is the biggest motion capture studio in the world. The, it's, it's really, really massive. They have different areas. They have different camera rigs. Um, I think one of the camera rigs has more than 200, 200 cameras. It's a little bit excessive, like 200. Uh, I mean, it's nice to have, but you don't really need 200. So there's other ways of doing it. For example, the, one of the basic packages that uh, motion capture companies start with, they, they have eight cameras. Eight cameras, 200 cameras. Yes, 200 cameras, the quality is probably a little bit better, but eight cameras do the job as well. And there's quite a few studios in Mexico already that offer this motion capture service right now. So here's some more shots from motion capture with uh, some of the FIFA cover athletes. There's a Swiss guy on the left, Winaldini in the middle, and Klose, a German guy on the right. And these people are invited into the studio because, for example, Ronaldinho, he has a few tricks up his sleeves, like a few things he can do with the ball that only Ronaldinho can do. And it's very a painstaking process for the animator trying to recreate that. So it's easier to get the guy in the studio, capture it on motion capture, and you have the data. And for, for the football stars, it's always a fun time as well. They like being involved with games. So here's some examples of what the FIFA team was struggling with um, in terms of animation when the new consoles came out. So again, like I, I was at EA at an interesting time. That was the time when uh, there was a switch from the old generation of consoles to what they call the next gen of, of consoles, like the, the 360, the PS3. And those, those um, consoles, they're more powerful and, they have more, and you as a team have more opportunity to create amazing things. So what, I, what you just saw was on the left, there was the guy on the PS2, and on, on the right, there was the guy in the PS3. So you have more opportunities. At the same time, you as an animator, you have to be more detail-oriented. You have to be better. So here again, guy on the left runs a bit like a robot, like around the corners like this, and the guy on the, on the right, the movement is fluid. It, it's much more authentic, much more like in real life. So those are some of the things that you need to work on as an animator. E, a sports. And where motion capture comes in handy. This is a little video of motion capture at EA. These are the goal celebration scenes that you see after you score the goal in FIFA. Thank you.
So, so those were done with real football players, not very famous ones. They're from the local Vancouver team, the Vancouver Whitecaps. Never heard of them before I came to Vancouver. But they were doing an amazing job in the, in the motion capture studio. And what you see in here, all of those, those, those scenes were used for the goal celebrations that are currently still in FIFA. Again, like at the end of the day, all you need is the system to capture this kind of data. Um, in this example, I used a, a Vicon system, which is, I know that there's at least four or five Vicon systems already here in Mexico. I think there's three of them in Mexico City, one in Monterrey, one in Guadalajara. And I know that because for Atrevete, we had to do motion capture as well because there's lots of dancing choreographies in there. So we had to get the dancing choreographies motion captured uh, here in Mexico. And we as Sabarasa in our studio, we don't have a motion capture studio. We don't have the expertise in how to do it. So we outsourced it to uh, Guadalajara, to um, uh, a game studio which is called Larva Studios. And they did that for us. And they did it well. They did it really, really well on, on world-class level. So it's already possible. It's already possible here. The tools are here. You have to keep people here who can do those kind of things. And you have, hopefully, a lot of motivated young people who want to step into that industry at some point. So I, I use those. Like Those are some things that if you're interested in working in the, in the game industry... And in this case, like more, uh, let's say you're an artist, you want to step into the industry as an artist. Well, get familiar with those things if you don't, if you aren't already. Like, get a copy of Maya, get a, a copy of Photoshop, get a copy of of ZBrush. Um, if you're a programmer, um, get familiar with the game engine. Like, even if you're not going to be working at the in the uh, AI team. Uh, of EA in the next two years, it really helps if you're familiar with the game engine. And Unity is available for free for students. So you can, you can get it for free and you can start working with it right now. I know for a lot of universities right now, they offer programs, um, maybe not entirely dedicated to, to video games in Mexico, but they have um, uh, concentration areas where you, get, where, where you can really focus on making video games. So use those opportunities. If you want to Work in the game industry, learn to, uh, learn to use the tools, go to the universities that offer these kind of uh, concentration areas, get good in what you're doing, and then start applying to us. Sabarasa, por favor. Because I always like to show this photo right here because the gaming industry is a very rewarding industry if you work uh, in it. It, it. It's interactive entertainment. So you're part of a, the interactive branch of the entertainment industry and it feels really, really good once you have a finished product. Like for me, it was always really, really nice to see wherever I went that people liked playing FIFA. And I was very proud because I was one of the little pieces that, that made that game and it made me always very, very feel good. In this case, that, that shot has been taken a few years ago and again, Ronaldinho was the best player in the world at the time and he's He's playing my game, the game that I participated in making, making it. That's a really, really good feeling. And I don't know if other industries um, that are not entertainment related can offer you the same kind of satisfaction. I, I really don't know. Like, for me personally, I could never imagine having to go to a bank every day and working there from 9 to 5 and counting the minutes. And No, like, like this is the kind of industry that where you don't count the minutes, where you're looking forward to go to work where the time flies at work. Like, I wish my day would have more hours. Like, I, would, I wish my day would have 36 hours so I could get, get more done every day. And that's the kind of satisfaction I get out of my job. So if you want to get in those industry, right now it's a good time to do that. I also love this photo because the lady on the, on the, on the right there, she could be my mom. She's not, but she could be. And my mom asked me my entire life, son, what are you doing with your life? You're always sitting in front of that box and, and doing weird things with, with that controller of yours. Like, you're wasting away your life. Go to school, start working for a bank, study business, God knows what you want to do, but just stop doing what you're doing. And I always had a very, very difficult time to explain to my mom what it actually is that I'm doing because I, I, tried, I turned on a game and I gave her the controller in her hand and, and she got instantly confused with the different buttons on the controller and she lost interest after like 30 seconds. So she never really got what I did. And then the Wii came out. And the Wii is genius because it, it mimics real life movement. So if you play tennis, you move your arms like in tennis. If you play bowling, 
you move your arms like in bowling. And all of a sudden, my mom didn't lose interest after 30 seconds. I could even play a whole game with my mom. And now my mom is a better bowler than I am. So it helped me personally, the really great tool for explaining my, my, to my mom that I didn't waste away my life. At the same time, it offers a lot of opportunity for companies that want to get into the game, for people who want to get into the business, because the stakes are not that high anymore. Now, all of a sudden, you have a console that allows you to produce games where you don't have to invest a, a few million dollars in order to put out a game. If you do a WiiWare game, you can produce it fairly cheap. If you put together a student group at your university, you probably get support from Nintendo uh, with a dev kit if, if, you do, if, if you do it smart. Or if not that, you can do something for the PSN network, all these things. So the opportunities are there. The world is changing. You can, you can even publish your own game online. So why not start with an online game? You know, you, it doesn't cost a lot of money to make. You can publish it for free. All you need to do is to pay a server to put it on a website. And then you can see if people like it or not. If not, then there's probably a reason why. And you can improve the game without spending a lot of money again. So all these opportunities are fairly new. They not, they're, they're, they're not, haven't been around for a very long time. And for Mexico spe specifically, we are, very, we are working very, very closely with the first Mexican game publisher. So like EA, Nintendo, all those companies are game publishers. Those are the companies that take your game and put it on the shelves in the stores, in the game planners, games, arts, Walmarts around the world. You have the first Mexican game pu publisher now. Slang is the first Mexican game publisher, opened its doors last year, and it's producing currently three different titles. So if you have a brilliant game idea, and it was kind of difficult to go to EA or go to Activision or go to Ubisoft and explain their game idea to them, a, because maybe, I don't know, your game design is in Spanish, or B, because the content, the topic of your game is a, is a, is a Latin American cultural topic, those companies were very likely to be not that interested. Now, all of a sudden, you have a Mexican company, and they understand what Lucha Libre is. They understand the power, the power of, a, of an IP like Atrevete a Soñar because it's so popular here in Mexico. So you have more opportunities to present your ideas and get involved with this business much faster. So Slang, publisher for AAA Lucha Libre. For those of you who haven't seen the trailer yet, let's take a look at the trailer. It's going to be a great game. The concept is fantastic. I mean, it, uh, Triple A Lucha Libre has a strong fan base here in Mexico. It has like this, I call it freak appeal to even like Germans like me who never heard of Lucha Libre before they came here. Then I saw those guys with the mask and I'm like, I want to get a mask. I want to, I want to go to one of those, those, those wrestling matches. And so you attract uh, potential uh, customers not only in Mexico, but also in, uh, amongst uh, Latino population in, in North America or like amongst Germans like me in Europe. So it, it's a great, great IP and it has a lot of potential. I really hope it's gonna be a success.
So this, this game is going to be uh, released this October, October 12th. The other game I was already talking about, Atrevete Sonyar, different target group, different kind of uh, customers in mind, will be released this November 23rd. It's for we only. And another one with a very typical Latin uh, cultural theme, El Chapo del Ocho. I can't tell you too much about this one, but stay tuned, it will be released this year as well. I'd like to get to the end of my presentation by telling you a little bit more about what we as a company are doing here. So we're involved in the three IPs that I just told you. We're working with, uh, with Slang on AAA Lucha Libre. We're, working, uh, we're producing Atrevete Asunia here. And Atrevete is produced entirely by Mexicans in Mexico City. The only non-Mexican involved in that game is me. And I really don't help them so much. They, they have to do mostly everything by themselves. Um, Save the Turtles. Uh, this was a release we did for DSiWare um, a few months ago, and it sold really well. It's kind of like a puzzle kind of game, and it's quite addicting, uh, uh, quite addictive. Like, um, I'm together with a Mexican girl, and she doesn't normally play video games, but she couldn't stop playing that game uh, the entire weekend when I brought it home. It's really, really addictive. Primrose, also a, a, a kind of experimental uh, puzzle game which has been released um, a few weeks ago. Here's the trailer. Sorry, the video is not, sorry, video is not working. Another one which is uh, an experimental game by game designer J Jason Rohrer. Um, also for DSiWare, for 200 points, easily downloadable. You don't have to go to the store and buy it, buy it there. You just turn on your DSi and you can download it directly. Protocol, that's a game that hasn't been released yet. That's something we're working on right now, which is going to be a shooter for WiiWare. And Horizon Riders, that's one I'm really, really excited about. It's also going to be for WiiWare. And to play the game, you have to use the, the Wii balance board, the one that you know from Wii Fit. So you have to use that balance board and you have to balance accordingly to not get off track and at the same time you have to shoot. So you're gonna get a gun and you have to shoot as well. So here's some shots from the game. It's gonna be very fast paced, very, very action loaded kind of game. And I hope the trailer works on that one. No, trailer doesn't work either, I'm sorry. But that's, that's basically it. So. I'd like to conclude my presentation with saying if you're into games and if you want to make games, the opportunities are there. Um, you don't have to go to North America. You can do it here. Be smart about it. Educate yourself first. Find out what you need to learn in order to become a job. Start connecting with companies right away. Go on portals. Go like on Game Dev MX, which is an internet portal right here for game developers in Mexico. Get connected to the people who are already making games in Mexico right now. Start talking to them. Ask them, how did you make it? How did you get there? And become good in what you want to do. If you're a programmer, program. If you're an artist, create art. Possibilities are there. It's, it's really up to you to make it happen. I wish you good luck. And thank you very much for listening to me. Hola, hola. ¿Alguien tiene una pregunta? Hi. Well, I have two questions. One is, if you have some other advice, other than you said, uh, if I have a video game but it's just the idea, do I need to make a demo to present to maybe to Slang or some other company? Or it's just presenting the idea. What What is the better way to go to a... Um, producer uh, and and make them produce your game. It, it's kind of a tricky. The one. Yeah, it, it it's kind of a, a a tricky question because like like if you've never made a game before, I would recommend to to start with something very small. I wouldn't right away come up with a grand game design for for a PS3 game. I'm I'm, I'm getting to meet a lot of people and a lot of the young people that that, that come and talk to me. They're like we have this brilliant idea for the next shooter, 
for the next ego show. It's going to be better than Gears of War. I'm like, well, but yeah, you first you have tough competition because Gears of War is a pretty good game. So how are you going to beat that? So my, my recommendation is um, while you're still in the learning process of how to make games, don't go for Gears of War right away. Like do something on a small scale. Do like a, a, a game for the iPhone, for the iPad, for an online game. And once you've proved to yourself that you can pull that off, then start doing the bigger games. So a good way of, of approaching a publisher like that with a grand idea is by saying, you know what, I've done all these little games already. Here are the prototypes. Here you can play them online. And now I have this idea for the big one right now. Well, my idea is for a, well, it's not just, it's not a small game, but it's not like AAA or something. It's not in 3D, it's mm -hmm. 2D. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's meant to be for iPhone. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if um, Slang produces that kind of games. At the moment, Slang is only producing console games. Okay. They're, 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 they're console game publisher. But for, for an I to release a, an iPhone game, you don't need a publisher because you, you, you can do that by yourself. Okay. So, but again, I, I, w I would start doing the, the, the homework correctly. Like, I would see, okay, what kind of game do I make? Like, in what genre am I? What is the competition lo uh, going to look like? How many games of that genre are already in the iPhone store? Okay. If there's already 7,500 games, uh, jump and run games, for example, and you want to make game 7,501 jump and run, <laughs> You have tough competitions, so okay. so I would start like if you really if you want to prove to yourself that you can make a game, make the game and don't worry about anything. Just make the game fun. If mm -hmm. you want to make money with it, then you need to approach it a little bit more from a business perspective and do mm -hmm. a little bit of a competitive analysis. Um, look what the market is like. How many, for example, how many iPhones are sold in Mexico? Um, do I even have a market there? How many games of that type are already out there? Who's going to be my target? Who's going to be my customer? Those are the kind of things you need to start asking yourself if you want to make money with it. Maybe it's not even in Mexico. I mean, that, I mean that's the beauty of, of, of digital distribu distribution. Like once you put a game on the, on the iPhone store, you can sell that game to, to Australia. But you will have to do the, the, the homework first. Okay, thank you. And the other question is, do you still work with Jorge Morales? We, we're still cooperating, yes. With Patito? Yes, uh, Jorge did the uh, motion capture for Patito for us. Jorge did the motion capture for AAA. And yeah, you, and he's a friend of mine. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Tres preguntas más porque ya no tenemos mucho tiempo. Sí, bueno. Uh, first of all, congratulations on Lucha Libre. I've read very good things about it on the industry. Thank you. Um, my question is. I am only starting as a developer, doing some uh, small stuff for X and A. Would you recommend getting a high-end PC for developing video games or using some high-end engines, or can I start with a modest rig? You know what? I'd like to pass that question to one of my programmers. JP, can you answer that one? <laughs> En, en español te contesto, este, eh, no, no es necesario que tengas un equipo muy poderoso, de hecho con que tengas una tarjeta gráfica decente que corre 2D o 3D bien y que tenga acceso al, a DirectX o OpenGL, eso es suficiente para gráficos, eh, vas a programación es casi lo mismo, de hecho hasta podrías, la, la computadora de antaño, eso te sirve, Lo, lo que sí te podría decir es que um, tengas a más de un, a más varios compañeros ayudándote porque esto no es no es de una sola persona hacer videojuegos es, es, es equipo y la mejor las mejores cosas salen siempre cuando tú te estancas y lo otro tu compañero a lo mejor si sí tiene mejor idea de cómo arreglar ciertos problemas pero sí en cuanto a equipo no no es muy exigente hacer videojuegos ya entrando a consolas pues es un poco diferente y ahí tal vez te recomendaría investigar un poco lo que es Homebrew para PSP y Wii y cosas así, aunque ya sé que Nintendo me va a matar por decir eso, pero es muy bueno para empezar a checar cómo es que fun funcionan esas consolas, no es como en Windows que todo está hecho o en Linux que todo el sistema operativo ya te lo hace todo, aquí sí tienes que empezar a trabajar solo, ¿sí? pues no sé si contesté tu pregunta, ¿sí? Uh, 
Uh, hi. Um, for a project like Heroes del Ring, what do you find better, to license the music or to make some specific music for it? Well, like for Heroes del Ring, like, like it, it has the... The goal of Heroes del Ring is, is to make it as lifelike as possible. So the, the idea was to... For example, for, for the entrances of the Luchadores when they come to the ring, to use as much uh, authentic music like you hear it in, in the arenas here as possible. But it's not always possible just because the licensing costs for, for those songs are ridiculous. So you can't always afford it. So I think it really depends on, on, on what, what type of game. For, for a wrestling game, I would say let's stay as true to, to reality as possible. Other types of games, I don't, I don't think it really matters. And I, I think there's a lot of good good games that come out with their own music that really may, uh, fit the mood uh, and and the action of the game. Hi, uh, can I uh, make a question in Spanish? Sí. Bueno, eh, yo soy artista, pero hay veces que como vivo en provincia de aquí de México se me hace un poquito complicado muchas veces llevar los bocetos o muchas veces todas las cosas que he hecho muchas veces como para no sé eh, backgrounds en, en juegos y muchas veces quisiera saber si es que Sabrasa o alguna otra empresa podría no sé o, o si es que tú sabes direcciones en donde pueda yo mandar todos estos tipos de, bo de bocetos que he hecho eh, no sé si exista el Allí, algún tipo de contacto. Bill, that one is for you. <laughs> I'm going to pass that one to our lead artist. Eh, ¿Qué tal? Eh, ahora sí que digitaliza todo, eh, que esté ya en imágenes. Hay muchas maneras de, de llegarlo. Eh, DeviantArt es una excelente forma de, de mostrar tu portafolio como artista. Eh, prácticamente... Cualquier estudio importante de, de, de videojuegos o de arte de animación en el mundo se fija mucho en el trabajo publicado en internet. Eh, y es una manera muy rápida de llegarlo porque solamente les das un link y ellos entran. Para saber qué personas son, te recomendaría este, checar lo que es este, gamedevmx.net y ahí puedes encontrar una gran cantidad de... un directorio de empresas en México que se dedican a videojuegos o que luego están buscando artistas. Ok, muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Um, we have something else. Eh, bueno, muchísimas gracias. Eh, les pido un fuerte aplauso para, para Jochen. En la cuenta de Twitter de Sabaraza MX vamos a regalar otras máscaras a lo largo de estos días. Vamos a regalar otras cosas ahí, unos códigos de Nintendo. Y, este, y bueno, los que tengan máscara, a ver si se pueden pasar a tomarse una foto con, con Jochen. Por favor. Gracias.